We've got new 96 overall team builders in Hockey Ultimate Team. In this video, we are going to do a ranking and talk through the circumstances in which I'd recommend which players to select as we're getting to the point where they are extremely expensive, almost to the point where you're probably not going to be able to make them anymore unless you dedicate your rewards to basically nothing else for the next month or so. So that said, we've got four great choices in the 96. Chris Pronger, Shea Weber, Danny Healy, and Matt Sundin. Let's break down what instance I would suggest you go with the each of these cards. So again, my rankings are purely for people that are looking for guidance to make the best possible choice for cards in game. When it comes to who you should take, always take your favorite player. I've said that for the last few years now, but as you're going to see here, I listen to my own advice in that case. But if you are completely okay with just selecting whoever you think will give you the best performance and chance to perform better in game, this is the ranking that I would go with. In at number four, and it pains me, the 96 Danny Hugh. Now, at face value, this is essentially a perfect card. Card. He's six foot four, two eighteen. He's Danny. Heatley. He's got playmaking power and sniper forward. None of these are really going to have a massive advantage for you. Sniper forward will basically max out his shot, but it's already there. The middle synergy slot will allow you to get speed burst or accelerator boost. And that's important because obviously you want to choose one of those. Getting his speed up to 98 would almost max it out. His acceleration is 96. It is unfortunate that you can't choose both, but more on that in just a little bit. And then the last slot is defensive checking and playmaking boost. I would go with checking boost to boost the endurance as well as body checking but as you can see across the board he is a fantastic card he's got gold unstoppable force elite edges 1t and make it snappy there is nothing more that you would should want on a card now why is he at number four because here is rick nash almost the exact same card and again you have to understand that 196 overall player is worth 1.2 million coins in value, and that's if you can get every single gold card at 1,000 coins, which you probably can't. When you take a look at Rick Nash's card, he's got a max wrist shot. Very few people take slap shots because, well, they're kind of scuffed in NHL 24. He has speed boost, so his speed gets up to 97. Danny Heatley's can get to 98. And the final slot is defensive checking and playmaking boost. So his body checking is exactly the same. His hand stats are exactly the same. He's just down one acceleration. Again, Danny Heatley's card is incredible but rick nash has unstoppable force make it snappy and elite edges too so while this is a fantastic card if you already have rick nash is going from nash to heatley worth all of those resources i just don't see how it is number three is the 96 shea weber this is a hell of a card offensive defensive and two-way defenseman defensive boost checking boost playmaking and shooting boost in the middle and then speed and accelerator boost something that is kind of frustrating but it appears that ea has tried everything in their power to make the 99s feel like they are 99 and what i mean by that is if you go back to prior team builder releases so for example this is the 87 jeremy roenick this is the centerman that we got at the original launch of the game you see the skating 90 speed 90 acceleration you know mid 80 shooting all of that the very next release of team builders featured this thing the 90 mike madano with speed boost and accelerator boost this is faster than some of the 96 overall team builders the jump from 87 to 90 was insane which is why the 93s felt a little lackluster because the 90s were so strong and then they had to do it again with the 96s because they realized if we give all of these cards the important stats at 99 what's the point of people trading them in for 99 overalls and while i understand that it's just frustrating because obviously that's why they didn't give separate skating synergies for these cards now shea weber six foot four 230 silver quick pick shut down that's all you really need Again, he can have 97 acceleration or speed. Honestly, on defenseman, I think acceleration is more important. He's got 99 everything else. This is one of, if not the best right-handed defenseman that is not a fantasy card, and not everyone can have a fantasy card. So there is no issues here if you wanted to go with Shea Weber. This is an incredible card. The only downfall is that his gold ability is just kind of pointless. Not really worth it, in my opinion. Coming in at number two is the 96 Matt Sundin. 6'5", 231, one of the biggest cards in the game. He's got sniper, two-way, and power forward, as well as speed boost and accelerator boost in that middle slot so you can get matt sundin to have 97 speed he's also got defensive playmaking and checking boost to help with his body checking a little bit goldborn leader while not an elite ability still a very good one even at this stage of the game simply because hits count for born leader to boost your players endurance and stamina puck on a string and backhand beauty or whatever as is big tipper but having someone with 99 face-offs and silver quick draw means that you can beat almost every tie-up and unstoppable force is a great ability on Matt Sundin. The reason why I have him at number two is because I think his jump from Jason Arnett is 
pretty big. Unlike Nash to Heatley, where they're essentially the exact same card, I think Sundin offers a little bit more in terms of skating and abilities, so it's far more worth it if you are replacing Jason Arnott. Not to mention he's Matt Sundin, which is a great card. Someone that I had a feeling would get a team builder because they are definitely selecting better choices for team builders this year. And then the clear easy number one is the 96 Chris Pronger. 6'6", 220, is a left-handed defenseman. And the reason here is because he can get enforcer defenseman, which means he gets up the 96 speed. And the middle one, you can go speed boost, meaning that you have a 96 Chris Pronger that's 6'6", 220 with 98 speed. Only 94 acceleration, so you can even it out and go accelerator boost instead. So you have 96 speed, 96 acceleration. It's got a max shot, body checking, every defensive attribute is perfect. And he's got just the best ability combo that you could want. You could go gold shutdown, but if you don't want to spend eight ability points on that, you could go silver truculence, which is all you need, and quick pick. On top of that, you could throw elite edges on, and now you've got a 6'6 defenseman that can hit everyone with potentially 98 speed that can keep his speed going left and right. This is the clear number one, in my opinion. I've played a few games with him. Spoiler alert, I chose Chris Pronger. And he has been great, everything that you need. Even if you don't make a 99 overall, this is still a great option that you could have for the rest of the year. Now let's talk about what I did. I chose Danny Healy, one of my favorite players of all time. He's the all-star, former Shark. I went with my favorite player. I'll be honest with you, I don't feel much difference in Rick Nash. Do I regret it? Not at all. Not even in the slightest. But there are so many left-handed wingers in this game that you can go with. On defense, I went with Chris Pronger. It is pretty easy. Like I said, there is really no situation in which Chris Pronger will not be your top left-handed defenseman or second at absolute most. And he will be that for the remainder of the game almost. Just because of his size alone, there's really not much that you would want from him. Let's discuss if you can only make one team builder. Let's say you only had two of the 93s, who should you go with? Now, under the assumption that you probably have Jason Arnott and you have to replace him, there are not many centermen that are going to be easily accessible for you to actually go out and get. I moved McDavid over to center and I don't love that, but that's because I made Danny Heatley. I would probably go Matt Sundin. If you could only make one, Sundin just gives you lineup flexibility because even if you have stacked centermen, which you won't have very many better than Sundin, you could play him on the wing, right? Like he could still be a forward for you. He's got a lot of flexibility. He's got silver quick draw. So if, even if he moves down your lineup, he's still going to have value for you on the penalty kill, things like that, or when you need to win a face off. Now, if you are going to lose Larry Robinson trading in, let's say you have Larry Robinson and Rick Nash or Arnett, it's very difficult. I think like you could either go Chris Pronger. There's really no downfall here. It's very safe, but forwards are always going to be more important to you. So this is what I would recommend. If you've got, let's say the 94 Austin Matthews from the Elites event and Gretzky, as well as McDavid. A lot of people do that are still playing the game. I would probably go Pronger because your center depth is fine. If it's not and you don't have very many of these or any of them, Sundin is going to have a bigger impact for you than Chris Pronger would just because he's going to be your first, you know, first line centerman. Your replacement is not going to be nearly as impactful. So I would probably go with Sundin in that situation. Now, remember, if you are trying to complete the team builder set still, okay, let's say you're saving all of your cards up. You want to make some. Do not forget about the training camp set. I made a video about this earlier in the year. The 79 overall training camp set allows you to trade into any two gold player items. So let's say you've got two AHLers that are never going to be anything for you. They're not in any value. And you don't know what to do with them. You can trade them in and get this training camp set, which features 580 overall player items from five different NHL teams. Why that's important is because you could throw them into your team builder set. So for example, you could choose the Seattle Kraken representative from that pack and you can do the Seattle Kraken 50 gold players that are you would have no other use for you can make the seattle crack in 84 overall again it's going to be very expensive but it's a very easy way to get the most out of your collection to help work towards making more of these cards it is going to be very very expensive so i hope that clears up and makes your choices a little bit easier for you these are all fantastic cards i want to be clear there let me know what you think in the comments section down below and i'll see you next time have a good one